Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Yeah. In the segregated South, buses were separated, black people in the back, white in the front. Where do you think the Asians sat? There is a new documentary talking about the racial barriers that go beyond the narratives of black and white. And it's showing tonight at the Honolulu Museum of Art. And joining us now live in studio is a film's director and producer, Crystal Kwok. Crystal, thank you so much for being no, here. No, thank about you the for film. having me. We really appreciate it. So we just saw a snippet of your film. So why don't you go ahead and, and give us a little bit of background about what it's about? Well, basically, I'm trying to disrupt this whole binary. Uh, you know, as we all learn in history, it's always black and white. Right? And so I'm complicating it by saying, okay, inserting the Asians. My grandmother grew up in the South, in Augusta, during the Jim Crow in period, segregation. South, and nobody thinks about where the Asians were. The it's always black or white. And you know how the, the white, there's a white water fountain and a black water fountain? Where did the Asians use? What school did they go to? Which, how did they get in the theaters? So we don't know much about our racial history. And it's interesting to see from an Asian perspective how that complicates our racial history here and where we're placed and how this all plays into this crazy racial hierarchy in this country. And, you know, the film looks to the past to talk about these racial tensions, right? Exactly. But what do you want people to walk away feeling and, and thinking after they see this? So in my process of making this film, um, we had Black Lives Matter happen, right? And then after that, we had the anti-Asian hate crimes. So this movie, really crazy, it spoke to these tensions. So how does my, how do we learn from the past to address why there are these tensions between the African American and, and Asian communities? And the solidarity actually, you know, there's a lot of connective histories we have, we just don't focus on that. We look at all the bad stuff, all the crime and all the violence. But there's, um, you know, we, we want to complicate it and we want to enjoy and appreciate each other's histories. I think we should learn from it so that we can move forward. And, you know, Hawaii is such a melting pot of different cultures. Yeah. So do we see any types of racial tensions huh. here? You ask a black person who lives in Hawaii, and they'll say, yes, it's it's living. And we don't see it because it's coded, it's subtle. Um, and I think we should just kind of bring awareness to it. And colorism, um, AAPI communities all over the country, they get discriminated just because we have dark skin. And we don't think about that playing out in these kind of hierarchies. And it's really not good. Yeah, and, and so before we wrap up, if people want to go see Blurring the Color Line, you know, I know it's air, it's coming, it's screening tonight, tonight yes. and then again next week, right? Yes, so how can they go about seeing it? So the, the Honolulu the African American uh, Film Festival is happening now, and uh, my show is tonight at seven o'clock. There's still time to catch it, and then next on the 16th at two o'clock there's another screening. You can also check out my website for more screenings. That's www.blurringthecolorline.com. Well, the film looks amazing, and we really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us tonight. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Crystal appreciate Clark. it. Pete, I'll send things over to you. We're going to go ahead and take you outside right now. This is Turtle Bay on the North Shore. We've got the winds and we've got, well, not looking too bad temperature wise. And in fact, we are relatively dry right now. We do expect to see somewhat weather later tonight. But of course, those winds really kicking up surf and seas and Boating conditions not ideal this weekend. We have small craft advisories. We do have gale warnings in effect for the channels, as you can see right here. And then east shore is coming in 10 to 15 footers for waves. So again, if we're entering the water this weekend, especially on east shores, or if we're thinking about going out on a boat, we might want to reconsider that as we are going to continue to have large seas out there. As for rainfall, we've had some scattered showers down through Puno on the Big Island. A couple of light showers down for windward sections of Maui, but outside of that, pretty dry across Oahu and Kauai. We anticipate tonight as the sun sets, we'll see those cloud tops cool and we'll see a few passing showers develop. So just like last night, we will have some areas of rain. And as we take a look at our, our camera here shaking over on one of each park, we're going to keep it windy tonight. Temperatures into the middle 70s and we're going to keep those winds around 20 to 30 miles per hour. Again, wind advisory in effect for most of Hawaii. We have that wind warning still in effect for the northern part of the Big Island. That's in effect until 6 a.m. Both of those on Saturday. So winds easing some some on Saturday, but not a whole lot. They'll still be relatively breezy, so we'll have likely winds 20 to 30 sustained, some gusts up to 40 on Saturday. Into Sunday, same story. Gusts maybe a little bit lighter, but still pretty windy for the weekend. We also anticipate in the morning hours and at night some passing trade wind showers. So just kind of a heads up we will have with those winds, some fast moving showers. Breezy winds continue well into next week, so no signs of light winds. In fact, by the end of next week, we could be talking about more advisories and possibly warnings. Marissa. Pete, thank you. When we come back, some stories to end on a positive note, including the celebration happening tonight for surfer Luke Shepardson, winner of the Eddy. But first, another check on the Friday Pauhana traffic. So what's the latest, Danielle? 
A good news coming in on the H1 freeway from IEA. It's a complete switch around. Now you'll get down to the Nimitz or Dillingham Boulevard exits and going through the Middle Street Tunnel fairly easy, while Mualua Freeway is backed up from about Kaiser approaching Pu'uloa and then out to the west side of Red Hill. On Mualua Freeway, we're getting past the Halava exit, looking very nice and Aloha Friday ish, getting close to the Radford pedestrian overpass. We do have a problem for folks going up Waimano Home Road. I don't have a camera there, but if you think to the left, looking up Waimano Home Road, there's a 12-inch water main break, and this is by Luehu and Ho'omalu on Waimano Home Road, and they've got water wagons up on Luehu for you. It's a 12-inch break, and one of the lanes is blocked, so just one Malkabound lane available. We've got traffic going out to the Halava Merge. Nice pace, as I showed you. Let's go to the Leeward Coast. No problems all the way through Honokai Hale. It was backed up, and now we're getting into the coast really great pace into Eva Beach. It looks good, too. I don't have any accidents or stalls. From the city and county of Honolulu, Traffic Management Center, I'm Danielle Tucker. You're watching KITV4 Island News at 4. We'll be back. Now, covering all of Hawaii, this is KITV4 Island News at 4. Well, the mayor trying to make Honolulu just a little bit friendlier and tackling a major problem. Coming up, more on a bill just signed into law aimed at preventing bullying and helping kids who are victims of bullying. Yeah, we'll take you to the bill signing tonight at 5. And as always, we like to end our hour of news on a positive note. Starting with this. The celebrations honoring the winner of the Eddie, Luke Shepherdson, continue in just a few minutes. He'll be autographing posters at the Gallery Waikiki Cafe on the ground floor of the Outrigger Waikiki Beachcomber. He'll then head over to a poolside celebration at that same hotel from 6 to 10 tonight with a special performance by local reggae band The Green. Proceeds from the event will go to the North Shore Lifeguard Association, the same group that represents Shepherdson. 
He's a lifeguard on Oahu's North Shore and was actually working at Waimea Bay the day of the eddy. A true legend. Well, here's a way to celebrate Valentine's How Day cute. with your loved one. Adorable. Buca de Beppo is offering up this heart-shaped lasagna. It's part of its love feast promotion. It is layers of meat sauce, ricotta, mozzarella, provolone, and Parmesan cheese, and it also comes with salad, garlic, and cannoli for dessert. It's perfect for two, and it's available for either dine-in or to-go. You can start ordering it tomorrow. And speaking of Valentine's, can you guess what Hawaii's most popular term of endearment is? Hmm. Well, according to Word Finder, which collects data from Google Trends, babe is the most used <laughs> term in the islands. Word Finder also found Almost the entire West Coast uses the word darling, but states on the East Coast tend to use the word hottie. <laughs> Other terms that came up were angel, baby, beautiful, sweetheart, honey, and love. I was going to say, what about honey girl? Honey girl. <laughs> Is that your name? I could see babe, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe for my cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that does it for our news at four. We really appreciate you spending a part of your day with us. KITV4 Island News at 5 is up next right here on KITV4 and KIKU. Aloha. watching KITV4 Island News at 5.
Power issues are affecting water service in Nanakuli and Waianae. What Hawaiian Electric officials are asking residents in those areas to do. Strong winds to end the week. Will the winds continue into the weekend? I'll let you know coming up. Autopsy of Lindani Miani, the man who was fatally shot by Honolulu police two years ago, reveals he had a degenerative brain disease. We'll have reaction from his widow. And a Honolulu City Council member responds to complaints about an, an illegal gun range in Waianae. Covering all of Hawaii, this is KITV4 Island News at 5. We begin our newscast this Aloha Friday with a live look.